Uh, the Civic Heritage Descriptor has three main objectives. Uh, to learn about history, uh, specifically local history, but also general history, especially in a European context, of course. Uh, the second objective is to reflect on civic values, democratic values, um, that the trainees can um, engage in and live today. Sorry. The third main objective is to work as a group, collectively, and to discuss those civic values and the historical um, heritage um, in a very respectful uh, manner. The main tool for the Civic Heritage Unit is an analysis grid that the youngsters can fill in when they either uh, visit the heritage site or if they meet with historical experts or if they do some internet research uh, on that specific heritage. From that um, sort of questionnaire, they will get a lot of elements um, of context, political context, scientific context, um, costumes, settings, what the people looked like, wh where they lived uh, at the time of the um, heritage element. And um, all this will provide inspiration for the following units, such as graphic design and scenario. Um, some things that uh, trainers should be uh, very aware about is that all heritage sites have um, specificities both in terms of their history and also in terms of the values that the young people today uh, can find in those uh, heritage elements. Sometimes it's very easy uh, if the heritage element is linked to values that we still uh, think are positive today. Trainers have to be careful when they select the heritage site and also when they think about the civic values that they want the youngsters to think about um, because all heritage sites are different, some are very well known, some are um, something new to discover, um, people have a preconception about the past that sometimes they will need to uh, overcome and of course uh, the values from the past are not always the same values today, but usually uh, it's very easy to find a nice storytelling around the heritage element to create a very nice um, video game. When developing the co-game curriculum, uh, we experimented with our own heritage sites, um, for example, the Colosseum in Rome, uh, Buda Castle in Budapest, uh, the castle in Linz in Austria, uh, the Mundaneum in Belgium, which is an archive center, and uh, a convent from the Middle Ages in Barcelona. All those different sites had different uh, specificities and different challenges uh, as far as the heritage descriptor uh, was concerned. Sometimes it was very easy to find information about the past, but we had to uh, think a lot and discuss about the civic values, for example in the Colosseum in Rome, uh, they had slaves, so today it translated to freedom. Uh, the Mundaneum was a pacifist project, so that was easy, it was pacifism today as well. Um, for the castle in, in Buddha, uh, it was the Renaissance and uh, the interest in different culture. Um, for in Linz Castle, it was the importance of cooperation in the Middle Ages. And uh, in Barcelona, it was the importance of uh, also uh, cooperation and the service to the public uh, that came from monasteries at the time. So it echoes uh, social uh, cooperation today in uh, today's society. Um, in conclusion, uh, this Civic Heritage Descriptor is a tool that each trainer can adapt uh, to their own heritage site, uh, to their own group, depending on uh, how far they want to invest in the research and how much history they want to uh, learn. But the most important part is that the trainers and the trainees have a good curiosity about uh, the past, about heritage and about the civic values that we can use uh, today. Mm -hmm.